Hi everyone. Hi everyone, it's Chris from Cam Designs. I'm going to give a few seconds to allow anyone that is going to join in, give them a few seconds to go ahead and get where they need to go. And I also want to put the link on, uh, I want to share the link into the group. If I can figure out how to do it. Your channel. There I am. Um, can I share? Okay. Remember to guard. Yeah, I know that. All right. We are copying the link. And if anyone's here, go ahead and say hi. Okay. And. There we go. All righty. So if anybody's just catching this now or just um, are going to come in after the live, I'll go ahead and change the um, description so that you know that it's no longer live and I won't be able to respond to your comments immediately because I won't be live. Let me go ahead and put my live chat up in case anyone pops in to follow along. So we discussed this in the group. I announced it that it was going to be a free journal cover PDF pattern. There will be no written instructions. Excuse me for one second. I'm going to go grab. So here was the one that I had in a pile forever. And I even pulled even the pattern pieces. This is what you're going to see similar to this. You'll see this. And um, I looked on here. It says 2020. So... There should be four pages. There will be instructions. Well, not really instructions. It'll be a supply list and maybe some measurements. And then the pattern pieces will start on the PDF portion of the pattern pieces that you will download. And then you're going to want to open the file and you're going to print it at 100%. You will verify your Tossed squares, which usually on every page, it's either in a piece or in a section on the paper. Um, these look like they're in the pieces. Oh, this one's on the section, but you'll cut these apart. There will be pieces that will be need that need to be taped together, and you'll you will see little instructions that say. You know, tape to piece one or align piece one here, etc. There are markings for the, I actually I did them in color, but there's an 18 millimeter magnetic snap placement. And then I will have to verify for the mini moon. So I'll probably take the mini moon placement off for right now. There are actually, I have two different sizes. Um, I get mine from Fireweed Stitches, and the ones that she purchased in the beginning are a tad smaller than the newer ones. So those markings that I have on here will not be correct. And I'm not sure which ones you're going to own. So I will um, go ahead and measure that and put it out in a separate, I'll put it right in the group. But here is the small journal cover. I actually increased this um, bound edge facing. I increased it by an inch so it will come out a little bit more. If you want more, you just make the piece larger. And I'm going to open this up and show you the original book that I purchased and I had on hand. Um, I actually had made some of these for vending, but I purchased this little 
book. It just has pages, line pages from the Dollar Tree. And let me get a ruler on it. So this little book is, let's see, 4, 8, 12, it's 4 and 13 sixteenths, and it's almost 7 inches high, and the depth is just a little bit more than a half an inch. So close that it's fine. Uh, you can put a piece of elastic in to hold pages back or not. That is up to you. All right, and this goes. You will have the magnetic snap portion facing to your right. And it will be raw edged. So when I was making this, I happened to think, well, maybe somebody that wants to make it in fabric would like it also. So this is what I'm going to tell you. When you cut the pattern pieces out, double what it says to cut out. Um, add your seam allowance to the top and bottom. Basically, you can take a ruler and add the seam allowance right to the pattern piece. This would be at the top and the bottom and at the end. For fabric, add woven interfacing, stitch it. Now, when you stitch the two pieces together and it's finished, it should match your pattern pieces when they're taped together. Then just basically sew it like it like I'm going to sew it now. So this is to get you to become a little more creative. So first thing we said, print the pattern pieces at 100%. Uh, you want to download the file to your computer because all my links expire within 30 days. You also want to I have some little cheat notes. I'll show you a few other things on the actual pattern pieces I have here. Now, here is the journal cover all taped together. And you will see on here there will be blue dashed lines. This is a fold line. This is... this piece that gets folded over. Now when I make these, I normally make them from cork and I do take a tracing wheel. Now I did it with the vinyl as well, with the wrong side of the vinyl facing up. Your pattern piece on top. See, I have a tracing wheel and I do have a ruler that's long enough. So I'm not going to press very hard, but I want to align this straight edge. Oops, let me let me get you onto the workspace. You don't need to see me, you need to see what I'm making. Okay. With the your vinyl, if you're using vinyl or cork, wrong side up, pattern piece on top. Align your pattern and then add that blue dash line. I'm just going to easily run a tracing wheel across that. Then the next step Taking the washer from my magnetic snap, and I'm going to center it, and it should be really close. It's really close to the black lines, so just on there. Okay. 
and draw your marks. And I forgot something to cut my holes with. Let's take a couple clips and just secure this. for the female portion of the magnetic snap. Make sure they go all the way through. And then there isn't anything else to mark on this main piece. So we'll remove the pattern. insert the female portion of the magnetic snap from the right side. I must I swore I seen the marks all the way through. didn't make the holes big enough. We will be covering a piece of stabilizer. must be dull right now. And then I bend my prongs outward, but I can't bend them tonight. So I have a little itty bitty hammer. And then we are going to cover this. We have a pattern piece. It's going to be called the Magnetic Snap Backing Cover. And this is what you want to use the permanent glue. And then I actually. Just going to heat seal the edges. Mm -hmm. 
now. Careful not to get any super glue on your fingers. We got a little bit. I'm just going to set this aside to dry. Um, one thing I do want to mention, we're pulling out the exterior bound edge facing. Well, it's actually the, the bound edge of the notebook facing. And if you come across where you have a really stretchy vinyl like this, you may want to fuse a piece of woven. And that, what I've done is I've heat sealed this as well. And uh, let me get this fused. We'll turn the heat press on. It just needs to fuse while I'm stitching so it doesn't stretch. And then while I'm waiting on that, we have the, this is the interior flap facing. And this one we will also need to mark for your magnetic snap. That missed everything, thankfully. Okay. Again, you can place clips to hold that pattern piece in place. Or you can hold it. Then we want the male portion. Piece of stabilizer. that had some other cuts in it. Let me try that again. Lord. Washer. And if when anybody makes this and they're following along, they're definitely going to be ahead of me. We should cut two of these backings.
And the reason that I'm gluing these on is because you will be sliding a notebook in and out and you really don't want to catch the backing. Yes, I could put a piece of duct tape on, but honestly, that duct tape will catch your notebook and probably come out with the notebook if you were to ever change it out. And I thought, I'm waiting for my kitty to knock on the door while I'm out here. Okay, so we will again glue this. And let's fuse that interfacing. All right, now I'm going to make sure this is all secured. And I will check that again when I pull the piece back out. So now that we have our bound edge facing, And as I'm working through this, I need to mark for you the center edge. So I need to know where it's folded. Now I just had my marking pen and it's gone. I don't even have to move. You guys can probably see it. So let's just grab a pen, make sure. I just want to mark that folded edge, even though I, I scored it with the tracing wheel. I want to make sure that I'm on that line. We're just folding it wrong sides together and placing clips. Now you can keep the clips towards the edge. That way then most marks won't show. And just because I forgot to mark it on the pattern piece, I'm going to pull the example. measure. It will be one, two, not quite four and three eighths. One, two, three, four, five sixteenths. So it'll be four and five sixteenths from the edge. Let's grab some DST.
I'm actually putting the DST on the back side. The wrong side, I should say. We have another one. We do. So I just placed two marks. I will remove the DST backing on one side and then place it right side up on top. I'm sorry, I have a hard time sitting and working. I like to be above my work. All right. Once you have that aligned, remove the other. And We're going to top stitch. Oops, we have a kitty scratch. Well, we will let them come in and out as they want. Now you can leave your thread tails long, pull it to the back side and tie it off so you don't see any back stitching. Tonight we're cheating, we're back stitching. I start and end my stitches about one eighth inch from the top and bottom. Oh, lost everything. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those days. Oh, here we found a little pair of scissors. to the other side. And I also keep forgetting to check to see if anyone has commented. It's Wednesday. We're not talkative today. That's all right. All right. Once we have the... My phone thinks I'm talking to it. Okay. Now... We have the flap facing, and those are placed wrong sides together. Oops, before we do that, we need to cut for the pen. So, sorry about that. Okay, we have that. So we have to, on this piece, you will have these two red lines. You want to align, when you align this piece and you go to cut it out, go ahead and cut those marks as well.
Now this would be the only piece that I would not do for fabric. I would not cut the fabric like this. Now, and I'm just going to heat those. I'm actually bending this open so that you can see the little, you can see it. And if I take my lighter, I can heat seal the edges. So now that that's done, we'll remove it from there. We are now going to place this piece onto the main body. Now what you can do, what we're doing now is we are marking these red dashed lines and this is a stitch line. So it's gonna hold that down so it's easy for your pen or pencil to fit through that opening. So what you can do is you can just take this pattern piece and I am cutting on the out side of the blue line. If I can get it where I want it. And then fold it open like that. And I'm going to repeat for the other end. Now, I'm going to clip it to the main piece, aligning my corners, and then I want to mark with a marking pen so that it Can you, there you can see the markings right there. So while we stitch, we're going to come back and stitch around and I'll show you now. Let's go ahead and now we have a stabilizer. Going to apply glue. Now you can use Decaville Heavy, Peltex, Bontex. I'm using Bontex. And let me grab a card and spread that out. So remember how I said I was making the adjustments as I go? Well, we will not need that magnetic second magnetic snap cover. We will cover the magnetic snap with a piece of stabilizer. And of course I had glue. And then I'm going to align my corners on the interior, align the edges, and we will clip. Oops. 
So when your cover is, the interior is facing you and the flap is to your right, go ahead and flip it. And we are going to rotate and start our stitching right here at the bottom edge. Eighth inch. Oh, my machine is going to squeak with this vinyl. Always does. Oh, cheapers, creepers. Let's go ahead and I was trying to align and I forget that the stupid Ruka will not let me pull it back up and adjust the stitches by hand. I have to adjust the dial. And I've owned this machine for a couple years and I still do it. I was so used to my Singer Vintage that I tend to forget sometimes. So we will start over. Okay. Are stitching the outer edges. Double checking my flap. To make sure that they do line up correctly. So now I'm to the square. I'm going to sew to the second line. Now, if your curve tends to shift or moves, you can trim it. Now, remember, you have your magnetic snap there as well. ease on through. If you don't have a skinny foot, you're going to have to be really careful stitching next to it. Now we're at 
the box. He's going to do it again. Now, where is my book? And there's your journal cover. I will be taking a look at this for other sizes. I haven't, I had a formula I was trying to compute and then something personal happened and um, I lost my train of thought. So I didn't want you to have to wait too long for this. So I at least wanted to get this out to you and I will do that. One thing I did forget to do is show you. Here's your pencil or pen and there you are. I really hope you enjoy this. I hope this is a great scrap buster for you. Um, I will get this the center line marked because as you can see, it's not centered. Oops. But I will mark the center line for you so you have easy guides on pattern pieces. And um, stay tuned because I think I actually found another one today. But we'll have to. I need some time to catch up. And um, don't forget to like the video. Subscribe to my channel. And let me know whether or not you like this. Thanks, everyone.